with all this negativity in the world when it comes to politics, when it comes to me being bigger than I want to be, fat wise, I thought there, there Chris Perkins came out with an article that I just bring a little positivity in the world. So let's go over it. What is up, Finn fans? If you took anything I said in that intro seriously, go take a walk. Go breathe. Who's for Baj? It's okay. But no, for real, though, there's a lot of negativity in the Dolphin community, on Twitter with the Dolphins. Uh, there is a lot of negativity in other parts of the world. So I thought, I, Chris Perkins came out with this article, and I, and I want to go over it because... It's, it was very interesting. Very, very interesting. But real quick, before we jump into it, got to shout out my guy and the sponsor of today's video, Clean the World. I talk about Sean Seipler and his company, how he got came to fruition of doing such a great thing for people of need. Go check him out, cleantheworld.org. See what he does. See the people he helps. Third world countries, natural disaster people impacted by homeless people he gets them water he gets them soap toothpaste socks shower stations he helps these people out he's a great human being go check him out link is in the description so chris perkins came out with this article and he said yes chubb and phillips both could be 100 percent healthy for the dolphins opener and i thought i started leaning towards the fact that bradley chubb bradley chubb no but Jalen Phillips, yes, because we saw him. I posted a video recently of him walking on the treadmill and then doing, you know, a, a walk where he was walking on his tippy toes. And essentially, you know, that's something you very hard to do when you tear your Achilles. So he's pretty far along when it comes to the rehab process. Uh, Bradley Chubb, I have heard nothing about. So I can't tell you anything about that. But I could already tell people are going to read the title. And be like, no, <laughs> it's wishful thinking. And of course it is. Like I said, some type of positivity to throw in there. Um, but let's see what Chris Perkins has to say. So he says, I've got, I've been greatly concerned about the Dolphins' pass rush. As you know, edge rushers Bradley Chubb and Jalen Phillips are both recovering from seizing ending injuries. Without their pass rush, the defense that finished number 10 in the league had a franchise record 54 sacks last season isn't nearly as effective. But I have good news, Dolphin fans. After consulting with a couple of qualified professionals, football players, not Dolph, uh, not doctors, there's reason to think Chubb and Phillips could be healthy and in the starting lineup for the Dolphin season opener in early September. Yes, both. Very interesting. Because, like I said, I don't. I torn ACL and a torn Achilles is kind of two different things you're working at. So it's going to be very interesting. He says it's optimistic, but totally possible. He said he consulted newly signed tight end uh, Jody Fortson and newly signed linebacker uh, Jordan Brooks. He said, consider this. Returning from an Achilles injury uh, generally takes between six and nine months. Fortson, who played for Kansas City, returned from his Achilles injury in six months. So the latter of the six to nine returning from an ACL injury generally takes between nine to 12 months. Brooks who played for Seattle returned from an ACL injury in eight months. So it is possible. And like I said, we've already seen uh, Jalen Phillips working out, walking without the boot, walking without any support. He's a good distance into his rehab. Rehab, as I like to call it. This is where things take an interesting turn. If the Dolphins think it's realistic for both Chubb and Phillips are both healthy by opening day, that would mean they only need one more edge rusher, a mid-level guy in free agency or the draft, someone to go along with this recently signed Shaq Barrett and provide depth. And like I was saying, guys, I was talking about like Jadavion Clowney or in the draft, which next week we go full force into draft month. And it's going to be crazy town, but Latu sitting there at 21, go grab him. There's a lot of guy, um, chop, grab him out of Penn state. Some guys are really like, and they can definitely fit in the situation. And then you can move on from Bradley Chubb and save $25 million. 
Like, I think this week I might a little bit go into the future and talk about the cap space and the cap situation next year. I'm going to do that. Think of the 2020 version of Andrew Van Ginkle, who had five and a half sacks. However, if the Dolphins don't think it's realistic, both will be happy, will be healthy by opening day, or that one of them won't be 100% healthy uh, until, say, midseason, that would mean they need a top-level guy, a high-profile free agent, or a first or second-round draft pick to supply additional pass rush punch. That's where I was thinking. Think beyond Barrett. Uh, uh, to perhaps the 2021 version of Phillips, the rookie who had eight and a half sacks um, and a dis- eight and a half sacks. If you listen to Fortson and Brooks, the optimistic view of Chubb and Phillips return is realistic. Let's do the math. He says Phillips who had a uh, six and a half sacks last season is recovering from an ACL tendon injury sustained by the jets on November 24th. If Phillips returns in six months, he'll be back in May. Now, I keep saying, especially with what I'm seeing with uh, Phillips and how he's progressing and how he's walking and the and the rehab he's doing and all the stuff he's showing, especially the one where he was bouncing on his bad Achilles doing the color thing, the, you know, the light thing on the door. And, like, he's going, like, hard on his rehab. I said he will be ready by the start of the season. I said, you know. Worst case scenario to me, he you know, comes in like week two, week three. I don't think he starts on the pup. He's saying that if he goes off of what Fortson did when he tore his Achilles, we'll have him back in May and have him ready for training camp. Interesting. He says Chubb, who had 11 sacks last season, is recovering from an ACL injury he sustained at Baltimore on December 31st. Shouldn't have been on the field. If he returns in eight months, he'll be back in August. Now, with Bradley Chubb, I think it's more of a realistic possibility that say he does come back in August. I think then he'll be back like week three. If he comes back in August, and if he comes... <laughs> Side note, you're probably seeing things get cut, and then you probably see me coming back looking like this. I'm sneezing like crazy, but I'm not going to keep it in. I'm cutting it out. So you're probably seeing cuts, and then me coming back all watery-eyed, which I apologize. I'm sneezing like crazy. Um, where was I? Chubb had 11 sacks. Like I said, you know, if he comes back in August... They're not going to rush him back, so he'll probably be like a week three return. And again, not on the pup. So he keeps saying, here's even better news. Fortson said he wasn't just fit to return to practice in a short amount of time. He said he was 100% healthy in a short amount of time. I tore my Achilles on October 17th of 2021, and I was back on the field that February. Wow. So I kind of felt 100% by OTAs. He said... Uh, of the organization team activities that occurred in April and proceeded through June uh, mini camp. So October 17th, November 24th, around the same time, uh, about a month apart. Brooks, a Christian who was wearing a t-shirt that said, seek Jesus said divine intervention aided his speedy recovery. It was just praying honesty. He said, it wasn't anything I did. I did the normal rehab protocol all week, but I I think it was just God honestly uh, healing me in the matter that he did. Here's the real matter. A study published a year ago in orthopedic journal of sports medicine regarding NFL players who sustain ACL injuries between 2013 and 2018 found the NFL players are severely affected by ACL injuries with only 28.5 still active in the league three years after the injury. Running backs, defensive linemen, and linebackers performed the worst after injuries. With Chubb and Phillips uh, be the the same positive after uh, they were pre-injury. And how long will it take to be 100%? Remember, every game counts for the Dolphins team that consider uh, considers its 7-10 to 10 road record under Mike McDaniel. Bailey needs uh, a good regular season record to get home playoff games. At the same time, you don't want to rush either Chubb or Phillips back. And uh, that's been the Dolphins trend with injuries to give the players ample time. That has the they had that lesson reinforced last season when they adamantly allowed center Connor Williams to return too early, sustaining a setback, and he missed more time. So there's sufficient evidence 
the Dolphins uh, need to be conservative on these returns. Fortson doesn't have any insight into Phillips' injury or recovery, but he's such a Dolphins fan, is hoping the best. I'm praying for his recovery, Fortson said. Uh, I hope uh, it works for him. It didn't take long. I was uh, back running in four and a half months. It didn't take that long. But it's 100% possible that these guys return for the season uh, it just depends when, and it depends how they look. Now, there are, you know, certain like one percenters, or there are people who tend to push the envelope on these things. Like you hear these two guys, but even you have Cameron Wake, who tore his Achilles, came back and had a fantastic year. I'm going to look up his stats on when he came back um, from his uh, injury, because I know the next year he went off. So in 2015 is when he tore his Achilles because he only played seven games. He came back 2016. He came back the next year, uh, played all 16 games and had 11 and a half sacks. There's outliners, outliers, liners, liars to this thing, but it is possible. It is possible for these guys to come back and still be productive but there's also a chance they come back and they're never the same. And that's where you look at Bradley Chubb and you look at his contract because his contract, I wouldn't touch. I would not touch his contract. And I'm going to show it to you real quick. This is Bradley Chubb's contract. Yes, it's a huge cap hit right here of 26.8, round up to 26.9 million. Just don't touch it. Work on Tyreek Hill's contract. Work on Tua Tonga Veloa's contract. And then you got the 18 and a half coming on June 1st. We'll have plenty of money to do the things we want to do. Sign more free agents. Maybe go out and get a Jadavion Clowney. Go out and get a guard. Go out and do what we need to do. Because if you look here and we move on from Bradley Chubb, you can save $10 million if you just cut him out outright right from the jump. Or you save $20 million if you make it a post-June 1st cut. So that's something that the Dolphins really – because if you kick it down – you kick the can down the, the road and then you take this $26 million and you you know change the base salary to whatever you want to do. So his cap hit is only $7 million and you save nineteen. million. You have to – to do that, have someone in mind. To do that, have – okay – you know, we so and so became available, or we can trade for so and so, and we desperately need that. Whether it's a defensive tackle, a pass rusher, a guard, we can we need that extra twelve million. Let's do it. But honestly, don't touch Bradley Chubb's contract. Let him play out. Release him next year, post June first. Get that twenty million, and then you have money to play. And then, especially if you draft properly, like I'm saying. I've talked about this at nauseum. If Latu's sitting there at 21, you take Latu, you have him play, you give Jalen Phillips a new contract midseason. Jalen Phillips goes back, he's still lighting it up. He's at eight and a half sacks in the middle of the season. Boom, you give him a contract extension, um, and then Latu is now your other pass rusher. And essentially, Bradley Chubb and Jalen Phillips switch position. Chubb is gone, and then Latu takes Phillips' position when it comes to money. So... It, there's a plan in my head, and I'm pretty sure there's a plan in the Dolphins' head. Will they execute it? What will happen? We just got to keep looking. Got to keep looking out. But I'm going to do a 2025 cap situation, see how that is. Uh, I think maybe I'll do that tomorrow. Depending on there's no other breaking news. Again, free agency isn't over. It's never really over. So I'll keep you guys updated on that. Comment below. Do you think it's possible for these guys to come back? Do you think they're going to be the same coming back from these injuries? Comment below. I'm very interested in what you guys think. And other than that, I'll see you in the next one. But like usual, stay classy. If it's up.